Hey you guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you've never seen me before, my name is Chelsea and I write books about black girls who aren't all that nice. And I am also the owner of the Melanin Library, which is an online database of books written by black authors. And I figured this would be a good time to give you guys a couple of recommendations that I have. And when I say recommendations, please understand that I say that in the sense of melanin awareness, okay? If you're new to my channel, what you need to know about me is I read the books that I like and I only talk about the ones that I like. That being said, I cannot possibly read every book that I see, but I'm very much in favor of having a diverse bookshelf, a diverse reading experience, if you will. So the books that I recommend on this channel and this video are given in the hopes that you will look into it for yourself and decide if it is something that you yourself want to read. I have not read the book. I do not know if it is actually what it claims to be. However, it is a black book written by a black author. So I am giving you the option to make an informed decision. Okay. So. <laughs> that disclaimer out the way i have two books that i want to share with you guys today and these are two books that are on my personal radar that even though i have not read them because one of them is not out yet <laughs> actually both of them are not out yet um they are books that i came across in my general tootling around online and i thought they seemed interesting so i'm sharing them with you guys so the first one is immortal dark by tigest germa and I hope that I'm saying their name right. If I'm not, please forgive me. But the cover is gorgeous. I am apparently in my horror era. So take that for what you will. But yeah, um, Immortal Dark is coming out in September of this year. And the summary for the book reads, Hidden in our world, a society of vampires originating in Africa can only feed from select human bloodlines. Each bloodline represents a house more cutthroat than the last. To ensure peaceful coexistence and inherit their legacy, human children of these families must study at an elite university before choosing a vampire companion. Lost heiress Kadana Dane grew up far from Uxley University. She is obsessively protective, mildly nihilistic, and willing to do anything to save her loved ones. When her sister June disappears, Kadan is convinced a vampire stole her the same vampire bound to her own house, the cruel yet captivating Susnios Sagad. Again, I hope I'm saying that correctly. To stay in Uxley, Kadan must study an arcane philosophy, work with four enigmatic students, and survive living with Susinos, even as he does everything to drive her away. It doesn't matter that Susinos' violence speaks to her own and tempts Kadan to surrender to a life of darkness. She must find her sister and kill him at all costs. When a murder mirroring June's disappearance shakes Uxle, Kadan sinks further into the ruthless underworld of vampires, risking her very soul. Here, she discovers a centuries-old threat, and June could be at the center of it. To save her sister, Kadan must bring Uxle to its knees and either break underneath the horrors of her own actions or embrace the dark entanglements of love and the blood it requires. So, I may have butchered the names, but Honestly, if that summary does not make you want to go get this book, it has basically everything that I'm into at this very moment. It has black vampires, it has high stakes, and it has dark academia that actually sounds dark because this may be a slight rant, excuse me if it is, but I feel like a lot of the dark academia that's been pushed to us recently, and I say us collectively as like the bookish community, and I say bookish community very lightly because I'm very much a part of the author community, but all those caveats aside, I feel like a lot of the dark academia that I've seen lately isn't actually dark. Whereas I feel like this, this is very much like death stakes and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm here for the black vampires. I'm here for the high stakes. I'm here for a university instead of a boarding school or a preparatory school or whatever you want to call it. I am very much here for all of this. Um, I also really like the element of sleeping with the enemy who may or may not be guilty of murder. Like something about that, just, I don't know, it appeals to me. Like this man is dangerous. Like there is, isn't like, ooh, he's a bad boy, broody. It's like, no, 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 he's a vampire. He's absolutely a murderer. But also is he the murderer, specific murderer that I'm looking for right now, right? There's just something about that that appeals to me. I feel like the stakes are a lot higher and paired with the cover paired with black vampires, this is just very much something that I want to read personally. So 
that's book number one. Book number two is No One's Gonna Take Her Soul Away by Amanda. If you guys have been around on the channel, y'all will already know that Amanda is one of the homies. So I am so excited for this book, but also she has an amazing, gorgeous cover. And we support black authors. We support black vampires because what? Black vampires. Y'all don't understand. <laughs> y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand. And just so y'all know, slight plug. My next book, Project Necromancer, definitely has some black vampires in it. So this is my era. This is my era. I'm living for it. I'm living for it. But let's stay on topic. <laughs> let's stay on topic. Uh, no one's going to take her soul away. The summary reads, Sophia Gale is dead. What's worse, she's in pandemonia cast down to the worst part of this hellscape by a terrifying mercurial goddess who determines the fate of every being. Sephira knows she doesn't belong in Pandemonia, so she plans to escape, confront the goddess, and return across the veil back to the land of the living to find the person responsible for her death. But the journey is treacherous. Sephira must travel the path of the damned, following through every part of Pandemonia to make it to the goddess's seat of power. Along the way, she meets an irritable yet caring vampire whose touch soothes Sephira's broken heart, a charismatic werewolf nursing a betrayal similar to Sephira's, and a melancholic demon determined to get her freedom by any means necessary. Though she recruits them as allies on her quest for retribution, this is pandemonia after all. Can any of them truly be trusted? And will Sephira escape or will she remain tortured for all eternity? This book is coming out later this year. I do not know the release date off the top of my head, but it will definitely be in the description box below if Amanda has already announced it. But like I said, the cover, the description, it's written by the homie. And if y'all don't know, um, Amanda's my friend, but I actually uh, met her because I enjoyed reading her books first. So the first book that I read by her was uh, the first book in her series, To Astero With Love, and it was amazing. So. She also has other books out, so if you want to read something else while you're waiting for this one to come out, you can do that. <laughs> but I also know that this book is a, I believe, a why choose romance about a girl breaking out of hell. So, I mean, like, what more do you want? Also, black vampires. And um, she's talked about this a lot on her page, but she said that this book is very much Dante's Inferno meets The Wiz. And if you guys have not seen the interview that she did on the channel, we talked about that a little bit. And we also talked about how I haven't seen The Wiz. Don't come for me. It is what it is. We all have, all have different lived experiences. Blackness is not a monolith, okay? Anyway, that out the way. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think of these two books, if you're excited for them, if there are any other books with black vampires that you are excited for, let me know, or ones that you have read that you're like, Chelsea, get into this. Let me know down in the comments below. And if you don't have any recommendations, you can go ahead and leave an orange heart because that is what we're doing this year. And you can click through all the links in the description box below because it's got the links to my books. It also has a link to the Patreon and it also has links to the shop where you can get yourself a Melanin Library hoodie, a Melanin Library mug, a Melanin Library t-shirt or anything else that you could possibly want. So get into it. And thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time. I hope your days are lovely and your books are interesting. Bye, you guys.